I suppose the, uh, the only thing that could influence my uh, retiring or giving up hockey would be that uh, things are quite hectic these days trying to combine business with uh, hockey. And uh, if the business uh, that I am involved in continues as it is, I may have to consider retirement before I would like to. That's the Tim Horton Donut it's the, Emporium? Yes, uh, Tim Horton Donuts Ward, mm -hmm. and uh, it's very nice to be able to let me get a word in about it. If I uh, may take the opportunity, I'd no. like to... Uh, <laughs> well, heck, I'm going to anyway. I'd like to say thank you to all you nice people in the Hamilton and Burlington districts oh, and in uh, Galt and Brantford and Kitchener-Waterloo uh, for uh, enjoying the donuts. We'd like to thank you uh, for paying for our hockey <laughs> night in Canada. <laughs> What's going on? How's everybody doing today? So here I am in Toronto. Hot Ontario, Canada. My hometown. Now, this is Tim Hortons behind me. What's Tim Hortons? If you're not from Canada, you may not know. Well, this particular Tim Hortons, this is a donut coffee franchise, right? Tim Hortons. But this particular one is where Mike Myers used to hang out at. Mike Myers, Saturday Night Live, Wayne's World, Austin Powers. His house, right two blocks that way. The apartment that he spent his first formative years is that way. And his school that I also went to, that way. And where I grew up, like two minutes away, that way. Tim Hortons is the biggest fast food franchise in Canada. Think of, okay, if you're from the States, where I visit a lot, I love the United States of America. There's McDonald's pretty much on every corner. In every small town, there's a McDonald's, probably two. Multiply that by 20. That's how many Tim Hortons there are in Canada. There's 4,300 Tim Hortons restaurants in Canada, as opposed to, I think about 1,800 or something like that at McDonald's, something like that. That's crazy, 4,300, they're everywhere. I'm gonna be taking you to Tim Horton, the man, to his grave. And on the way to his grave, which is only about a 10 minute drive from here, truck, enough. It's very good, it's just raining. It's very hot. Tim Moore's coffee is the best. I do like Dunkin' Donuts. Don't mind Starbucks, but Tim Moore's is the best. It's starting to burn my hand. Now, it's only about a 10 minute drive. Stay coffee. It's only about a 10 minute drive. I've said it three times now. And I will pass probably I'm gonna guesstimate 10 Tim Hortons on the way. There's either a standalone store like this, you're gonna find kiosks and gas station, they're in malls, there's tiny ones, there's big ones, they're everywhere. And they have donuts, now they have bagels, sandwiches, all that stuff, soup. But they're most well known for coffee and donuts. I'm gonna tell you about Tim Horton, the man though, who he was, and how Tim Horton became such a huge, huge success, making the best coffee you'll ever have. It's actually, that was not fake, that's really hot. Okay, let's go for that drive. Oh, and I did a video about Mike Myers on my channel. I'll put a link below. That's why I was mentioning Mike Myers. Just every time I come to this Tim Horton, I think of Mike Myers. I think about Mike Myers probably once an hour. He's awesome. All right, now let's go. Hey, I don't care. I was there. I cross my fingers and I double dare you. Hey, I don't care. I was there. I'll get to heaven in my easy chair. Little boy, slow down. Ten miles to the general store And I, this road is too hard to run Ten miles, son, and maybe more Cause there's a porcupine and a black bear And a bridge that is almost gone And a, nobody wants to pick you up Nobody gonna take you home Hey, I don't care what's there I cross my fingers and I double dare you Hey, I don't care what's there Get to heaven in my easy chair Little boy 
don't you know Everybody got an axe to grind Well, uh, you got plans, but no dough So here's what you can expect to find There's a heartbreak on every corner Pick a All right, so here I'm at York Cemetery in North York, Ontario. Now this cemetery, see those buildings right there? They used to have movie theaters in them, right just over there, and that's a community center with a big pool, Douglas Stone Aquatic Center. I used to swim there all the time. And yeah, we used to go to movies right there. I didn't even know this cemetery was here until a few months ago. All my life, never knew this was so close to where I grew up and that Timor was buried right here. The cemetery is huge. I have no clue where he is in this cemetery. And because of COVID, the office is closed, so I can't get any information from them there. This is gonna take a while, but I'm gonna find it. I always do. Uh, the exception was Robert Kardashian's grave which took me two times when I went out to LA a few times. One time I, got, I was there for about a good two hours, couldn't find Robert Kardashian's grave and I gave up. And then the next time I was in LA, when I landed right from the airport, straight to the cemetery, Inglewood Cemetery, looking for Robert Kardashian's grave and I found it that time. Uh, this is gonna be difficult, but you're gonna do it. There's a tank over here. A lot of war vets are buried here. I'll show you the tank right now. over off in the corner and this cemetery is just huge I mean this is just I'm in a small pocket of it a little corner <sighs> okay I'm gonna get to work you sit back and relax while I do the work it's kind of how this works and I like it that way Thank goodness for groundskeepers. They've gotten me out of a few jams before in cemeteries and once again, they helped me out. They told me uh, Timor's buried in this section right here, section 14, which is a smaller section of the cemetery, but still big, but I'm going to, um, I'm gonna find him. Uh, just to, okay, so Tim Horton was a hockey player, an NHL player. He was born in Cochrane, Ontario. Now Cochrane, is a really small town. It's about eight hours from Toronto. I can only imagine how cold it is there. They have a polar bear uh, habitat there. That's how cold it is. I mean, it's a blistering sunny, well, it's not sunny right now, but I mean, it's, it's very, very hot in Toronto. It's probably very cold up there right now still. I mean, it's summertime, but yeah, eight hours away. So he grew up there, then moved to Quebec, then back there. He started playing minor hockey and then he started playing for the Leafs, but he played in 1950. I think he only played in a few games. And he did play again until 1952. But then when he did play in 1952, he played for 18 years for the Toronto Maple Leafs, helping them win four Stanley Cups. And he was a big guy. He was a defenseman. He played in, I believe it was the record for the Leafs and for the NHL at the time, 486 consecutive games, which is impressive in hockey. If the sport of hockey is incredibly brutal, really tough. Injuries happen. 486 consecutive games without an injury, that's almost unheard of. So, yeah, he holds the record for the Leafs still for that. And he was a big part of the Maple Leafs' success. And I love the Maple Leafs. My goodness, do I love the Maple Leafs. Like, I love the Maple Leafs. Then, he left the Maple Leafs, and he, I believe he played for the Rangers. Uh, Pittsburgh Penguins, and then finally the Buffalo Sabres. I love all those cities. New York, Pittsburgh, and Buffalo. Love, love, love them. Just, I have a really tough time when it comes to the hockey teams because I'm such a homer for the Leafs. So no offense to the city, but to the teams, it's for me, it's all go Leafs go. And then Tim Horton started a, re a, a restaurant. Enjoy the taste and flavor of a Tim Horton donut, the aroma of our coffee and the smile we save for you. When you get the urge for freshly brewed coffee, freshly made donuts, head for your favorite donut shop, Tim Horton. We serve only the freshest coffee, donuts, Tim Muffins, and Timbits, all with a fresh smile. Tim Horton Donuts, fresh from your friend along the way. Start making 
coffee and donuts and sell them to the people while he was still playing hockey. He opened the first Tim Hortons on Ottawa Street in Hamilton uh, in 1964. And by 1968, it was a multi-million dollar company. Now, when Tim Horton passed away in 1974, his business partner, Ron Joyce, bought out the company, bought Tim Horton shares of the company for $1 million. And like I said, and now, and there was 40 stores at the time. And now... Like I said, there's almost 5,000 stores worldwide. That's impressive. Uh, going from 40 to that many. And here's Tim Horton right here. I had a feeling when I saw these red flowers. So somebody's put a uh, New York Rangers puck there. I'm actually surprised it's not uh, Tim Horton cups all over the place here, or at least a few. It's good to see, it'd just be a lot of debris. There's a lot of Tim Hortons in uh, the cups in Toronto. It's part of our um, debris. Toronto's a very clean city, but Tim Hortons cups tend to be found everywhere. And if you're wondering what an MG is, his name was Miles Gilbert. Tim seemed to be a uh, nickname. TTFN daddy -o. Now, Lori was his wife, and I believe Kim was his, Kim and Tracy are his daughters, and he has two other daughters. And I believe one of them married Ron Joyce, uh, who is the CEO or owner of Tim Orange now, married his son, and they own uh, a couple of Tim Orange out in Colburn or Coburg, Ontario. Now, Ron Joyce died, I believe, last year. And this is a huge family plot, as you can see. Wow. Now, at the age of 44, that's when Tim Horton died in 1974, and it was a tragic death. He had just finished playing the game for the Sabres against the Leafs, so he was leaving Toronto and driving back to Buffalo in his Pantera sports car. It's about a two-hour drive, roughly, from Toronto to Buffalo, and he stopped in Oakville at one of his stores, and he called his brother Jerry, I believe, and Jerry could tell that Tim had been drinking and tried to get him not to drive, but... He continued along and a woman saw the, uh, the car kind of erratically driving so called the police so they were on the lookout for this car and it's not known if it's not said that he was he knew he was even being followed by the police but he turned off the road in St. Catharines Ontario which is just near the border of uh, New York New York and Canada and crashed and flipped his car he was thrown really far from the car and died instantly. Uh, very, very sad. Sad death and preventable. And he was never around to see how big his company got. It's really, I mean, in age 44, that's a young age to go. Just talking to this gentleman here, fellow hockey fan who's full of information. Uh, wow. And... TTFN stands for Tata -ta for now, is what he told me. Daddy O. And he put a puck himself. He just put a puck right behind the Rangers puck right there. Now, I was talking about uh, Tim Morton's untimely death, 
and I believe it was around 2004 his autopsy was uh, report was released and he was twice had twice the, I hate giving the details about a person's death like especially when it's something that is like preventable like that like drug driving but uh, twice the legal limit half bottle of vodka in the car and he was uh, high on uh, stimulants some painkillers it's really sad and his wife sadly sold the shares I think I already mentioned this for one million dollars yeah like I said and then sued Ron Joyce and the Tim Morton's company uh, twice seeing she was not of uh, sound mind when she made that deal and was well raw basically and was denied twice and she passed away in 2000 and i don't know how much i have of a canadian accent but the gentleman i just met um i should have had him <laughs> talk because you would really would have heard the canadian accent oh yeah oh yeah well, I'll tell you something right now about Tim Horton. I'll tell you another thing about Tim Horton. I just, uh, <laughs> I noticed it. And if I noticed it, because I live in Canada and I'm born and bred from, you know, from Canada. If I noticed a Canadian accent, you know it's strong. And that guy has a strong Canadian accent, but full of facts. And I want to thank him. I didn't catch his name. Uh, and boy, he was an old gentleman. He doesn't know how to use a computer, he said, so he can't watch my channel. Because uh, he wanted to see, because he's really interested in the Kennedys and stuff like that, things that I'm interested in. And he, but he knew everything about so many sports stars in Toronto. It was just and legends like Con Smythe, Johnny Bauer, George Chavallo, telling me lots of stories. Really interesting stuff. So thank you to him. Now, and he also filled me in on another thing that I forgot about: Tim Hortons house in Toronto. Would you like to see that? Yes, I want to see it. I've never been. I've probably driven past it a million times because it's right. Well, it's a Ward and Ellesmere, which is, you know, you, it's, it's a major intersection. Scarborough. Let's go to Scarborough. Let's go. Just on my way to Tim Horton's house. That's really cool. And like I said, this is a um, pretty busy area, as you can tell. And uh, without COVID going on, it'd be even busier. And when Tim Horton bought this house in 1952, I'm not sure how much he paid for it though, there was not much around. This was a new subdivision. And now there's everything. I mean, if you know the area, if you're from Toronto or whatever, the VIP pool is just up there. <laughs> that pool hall, that crazy place. Um, there's a Costco right there. I mean, it's, it's a really bustling, busy area. But back in the 50s, NHL players were making about, wow, it's loud, 9000 a year. They weren't making, you know, multi-million dollar salaries like they do now. And a guy like Tim Horton would be making a lot of money if he was playing now because he was that good of a player. So he had to pick up odd jobs and stuff to support his family. But here's the house right here. I've driven past it so many times. This is really cool that I'm learning more history about my own city by being stuck in it. And I love Toronto. And here's Tim Horton's house. It's that house right there. That's it. Humble little abode. It's where Tim Horton lived for about 10 or 11 years, like I said, right there. Probably not a lot of people know that this house was owned by one of the greatest Toronto Maple Leafs ever. Right here in the heart of the city. Well, it's Scarborough, but well, it's, yeah, kind of in the middle of the city. That's it right there. All right, leaving Tim Horton's house. That was really cool to see. Uh, let me just walk around the corner. It is loud. And there's a little bobcat. Not a real, actual, you know, like one of those whatever bobcats do that's why it's so loud not like a bobcat like rat like you know I don't know what the hell they do 
Ah, uh, yes. Of course. It's not a Tim Hortons cup these days. That's what you're finding around. Okay, a little quieter here. I'm gonna say goodbye. I'm gonna say peace out to you. And thank you for watching my video about Tim Horton. One of the greatest Maple Leafs of all time. Leafs roll. Wear a mask. Be safe. Protect yourself. Cover nose, mouth, and chin. That's how you gotta do it now. See you later. Oh, in my next video, will I be in Toronto? Can I travel?